This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at convertibles and warrants. And it's important that you can identify the difference between the two because they're, they're similar in nature, but distinct enough to make sure that you don't make the mistakes that students do make if that makes sense. Uh, so a convertible is a debenture, but a special type of debenture, whereby you still pay interest on the debenture once it's been issued. However, on redemption itself, so at the maturity date, the investor, okay, uh, will have a choice of taking either cash or a set or predetermined number of shares within the company. Now, from an investor perspective, that's quite good, isn't it? Because you're guaranteed an amount of cash no matter what happens to the share price. But if the share price goes up and reaches a value that is above the value of the cash, so based upon the number of shares that you can take, based upon the value of a share on conversion, means that you could make more as a return than what you would if you just took the cash. Okay, But if the share price were to fall, you still know that you're guaranteed that gross redemption yield based upon the receipt of the cash amount at the end. OK, uh, so as it says there, the advantages allow the shareholders to gain if the company does well and the price increases or if the company doesn't do so well, you're not going to lose out totally because you're still going to get the cash anyway. OK, however, again, additional point just to note, uh, because there is that opportunity to make a large gain in the future if the price of the share increases then uh, you can go through there and have a low rate of interest. If it's a low rate of interest, it's better, isn't it, uh, from a cash perspective over the life of the project and the life of the convertible. OK, uh, there you have it. Uh, in terms of a warrant, just be careful. Uh, people get confused, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but the, the, the warrant is it's a right to subscribe for some new shares. So you are offered the opportunity to buy shares in the future. OK, now that's different to a convertible because you've made an investment of your cash within the business. And then at the end, you either get your cash back or you get shares, but you don't have to pay for those shares. The warrants is an option given to investors to buy shares in the future. And the reason why people get confused is because they are sometimes issued with debentures. So there will be debentures or loan stock issued with warrants. OK, so you still go through there and get your cash back as part of the debenture. But you also then get the opportunity at a fixed date to go through there in the future and buy some shares as well. OK, and it's because you have a debenture and you have the issue of shares. People get confused. Warrants, the investor has to pay to get some additional shares and will get the cash back anyway. Uh, but your convertibles, you either will get cash or you receive shares. You do not have to pay for those shares. OK, so it's vitally important that you understand the difference between them. The focus most of the time is going to be on convertibles because that is whereby you can bring in the numbers as well. OK, which is what we see on the example that you have the entitled convertibles. OK, because it brings in what we saw earlier on or what we mentioned in terms of talking about your gross redemption yield, your yield to maturity. I'm working that out of the IRR of the cash flows. OK, uh, so what have we got? How does it all link in? Uh, well, if we look at the information, the question, it says that a company has in issue 8 percent debentures. So that, that is the coupon rate, isn't it? Uh, so we'll be paying eight dollars per one hundred dollars nominal uh, to 2019 to 019. Uh, so they are redeemable okay, in 2019. However, they can be redeemed at par or converted into, is it 20 ordinary shares in the company for every $100 of investment that you have made? OK, so we have convertible debentures. OK, you will either take $100 
of cash or you will take 20 shares at whatever the market value is at that date. Uh, share price is $4.50 per share. That is currently. So that is today. OK. We don't know what it's going to be in the future. So what have we got? Uh, part A. It says, will the venture holders do what will the venture holders choose to do on maturity if the share price of the company in 2019? So in the future is four dollars or six dollars per share. Would you go through there and convert? OK, well, what you've got there uh, is it the A. And is it part one? Uh, if it was there four dollars. Per share, then what you've got there, your shares will be 20 of them at four dollars each, which gives me there is it 80 dollars, okay, versus. The one hundred dollars, which is there for your cash. Simple decision, isn't it? What would the shareholders or the debenture holders, the convertible debenture holders do? Would they take the shares or would they take the cash? Which one's worth more? You'd take the cash, wouldn't you? Okay, it's worth a lot more, isn't it? So if the share price got to four dollars per share. You would take the cash, you would not take the share. So therefore, what what you could say. Uh, is that the debentures are out of the money, okay? Because you are not going to convert them for the shares because the cash is worth more, the shares are worth less, okay? Uh, scenario two is whereby it is six dollars per share. I think you can guess what's going to happen, but uh, so the value of the shares is it 20 shares? They are now at six dollars each, which is there at one hundred and twenty dollars, isn't it? Okay, versus again the same option of $100 cash so I'd have thought there that we would here be taking the shares because they are worth more uh, if that's the case as the shares are worth more and this convertible can be referred to as being in the money okay you will make more from taking the shares than what you would the cash okay uh, just note that there is, if you like, a point whereby we would be uh, essentially is that, say, uh, indifferent. OK, uh, bu -bu 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 no, not, not indifferent as such, uh, but based on what, what we have at this moment in time. Sorry, uh, although it's not there in the question, uh, what you've got there is that currently. They are at, is it $4.50 per share? So we have at the moment a share which is worth $4.50. If that's the case at the moment, okay, what that means is your 20 shares at four dollars fifty is there is it ninety dollars okay uh, that is referred to is it there as the current conversion value okay so a little bit of terminology there yeah, the current conversion value is there. If you were to convert the shares, is there is $90. I know it's not asked for within the question, but it becomes relevant 
as we go through there and work is it part B okay but in answering part A you've got your current conversion value which is there at 90 okay uh, at four dollars per share we're going to take the cash if it was to go to six dollars per share in 2019 we would take the shares okay so that answers part A uh, part B Uh, what have we got? This is where it gets funky. Uh, part B, the investors require a return of debentures of 10%. So that's your gross return, uh, your yield to maturity. Uh, so that's the required rate of return, isn't it? A 10%. Okay. Uh, if today is the end of 2016, the share price is expected to grow at 7%. Calculate the current market value. Well, the market value is the present value of the future cash flows, isn't it? Discounted at the required rate of return of the investors, okay? Don't worry about part two just yet. Let's just look at part one. So the market value is the present value of the future cash flows, isn't it? Uh, so we need to go through there and look at the time period. So today, and then is it for the next three years? Uh, so at the end of 16, so we will get the coupon interest in 17, 18 and 19. Okay, three years time. Uh, we need to go through there and look at, is it the cash flow? Well, the cash flow that you have there. Ah, careful. Careful. Uh, time period T1 to 3. Uh, we're trying to work out the market value, aren't we? And then you've got, is it the redemption value? Is it there in three years? Apologies. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what you've got there, the cash flow from one to three is the interest. Is it at eight? So if you're curious as to where that's come from, is it 8% coupon of the par value? And then what we need to do there is we need to do a little bit of discounting. Uh, the investor required, was it a rate of 10%? So an annuity factor for three years at 10% is 2.487. You can use your tables to work that out. And your present value is that, is that at 19.90. Okay. Uh, 2.487 times 8. 19.896 of 19.90 okay so that's looking there at the present value of the interest so what you've got there the future cash flows let's write them in so that you know are the interest which is based upon the eight percent coupon and is it the the redemption value however the issue that we have there is it's a convertible okay so we don't know what the redemption value is it depends upon what the value of the shares are so what we need to do is you just need to do a, a little working to see whether or not based upon this growth rate in the share price of seven percent will that get to be above the redemption value at par okay will it become greater is it the than one hundred dollars okay because if it is you go with the shares if it isn't you go with the cash wouldn't we uh so what we've got there if we're looking at the market value of the shares uh we know there are 20 shares that we could take the current share price is $4.50. That is going to grow at 7%. Is it there for three years? So one plus the discount rate to the power of N. Uh, discount rate, the growth rate, I suppose is a better word to use is 7%. So 0 0.07. Again, I, I would hope that you're happy with this now, but you, you never know. Uh, so that's one plus R, isn't it, to the N, and that's 0.07, okay, so 1.07 to the power of 3, 
Divided by 4.5 times by 20 is there is that 110 point is it 25 uh, we'll just put two that's consistent with what we have elsewhere okay 110.2 okay excellent yeah you might get 110.3 you're not going to lose any marks okay based on what my calculations are that i did earlier uh, i'm not really worried about it put in 110 it will make life is it the much easier okay so the market value of the shares is higher than the cash so therefore we will put in the redemption value as that of the shares okay a discount factor at three years at 10 percent 0.751 uh, does that give me there is 82 Point seven six. Okay. Excellent. Uh, when we go through, add those up. Nineteen point nine plus eighty two point seven six. Does that give me? Is it one oh two point six six? Okay. That there is the market value of. The debenture, the convertible debenture. Okay, excellent. So, what have we got? Uh, next question, uh, part two. Uh, calculate the conversion premium. What on earth is the conversion premium? Okay. Uh, well, your conversion premium is looking at the excess of the market value that you get over uh, the current market value of is it the share so if you like the current conversion value okay so what you've got there is to work out the conversion premium you take the current market value of the convertibles less is it the The current conversion volume. Okay. Uh, so it looks at the premium uh, that you get from, if you like, cashing in the debenture now compared to what you would get if you were to get the shares today. Okay. So the current market value is that the 102.66, I think that's what it was, but yeah, 102.66, less your current conversion value is that the as 90, okay, so remember we did that in part A, so what you would get currently is there $4.50 per share, okay, so does that mean that? That you would get is it 10 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 the premium because uh, again you can convert at any point in time you don't have to wait until the end if you wait till the end you, you might just take the cash you can't take the cash beforehand you can take the shares at any point in time uh, so the current conversion premium is at 12.66 the difference between what you would get if you converted for shares now uh, versus the value of the convertible what should happen is that should steadily get smaller and smaller and smaller uh, as the current conversion value increases as the value of shares increases because you would hope that by getting the investment from the investors what would happen is that you would invest that money wisely and therefore the share price would increase okay the business makes more profits the shareholders react uh, and push that share price upwards okay so the conversion premium should reduce the closer that we get to the conversion date okay make sure again uh, that you go through have a play around with that question work it yourself again have a go at the questions that you've got within the study text so make sure you work those examples from your chosen tuition provider and then have a play around with some of the objective test questions. I, I doubt you're going to get anything more difficult or challenging as that there. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.